Here's what we can do with window rules and layer rules. So as you can see for Rafi, I have this really cool pop-up animation along with a dimmed background. That's one thing. Then for Waybar, we have blurring enabled. It's a bit slight, but you can see it if you look hard enough. Right? Then we have W logout, which has this cool blurring effect. Right? This blurring effect along with whatever animations we have over here. Now, first, I will show you whatever window rules I'm using on my machine. And then I'll show you how you can make your own window rules. So if I just open config hyper modules window rules .conf. And by the way, if you're wondering what that modules folder is all about, I explain it in detail in my modularity module that's in my paid program, Hyper Accelerator. So I just basically show you how to make things modular, right? Why you make things modular and how to actually make stuff modular. Basically split things up so that you can maintain it easier. It's the first link in the description. You can check it out, right? That. Now, for the window rules, we have ignore maximize requests. What does this actually do? Well, what this does is certain windows want to be maximized. Let's say I open GIMP, for example. Right, some GIMP window wants to be maximized and take up the entire space, but you don't want that behavior to be exhibited by GIMP for whatever reason. So for that, you can use this rule. So ignore maximize requests, that would be suppress event maximize class everything. So basically for every single window, you want to ignore the maximize request. Great, then we have remove right click menu blurring in Chromium browsers. So if I open a Brave browser over here, if I right click, as you can see, there is no menu blurring in the browser over here. So right now it's running in XWayland, right? This browser is running in XWayland. And so if I right click, you don't see any of that, um, what do you call it? Background over here, right click background with blurring and weird artifacts. It basically helps to disable all blurring in the Chromium browser, right? Then we have removal of the weird pop-up behavior in VS Code. Now, this one, you might want to try it out and see if it works for you, but what happens is when you open the regular version of VS Code or VS Codium in my case, and then you right click, like let's say you're on a touchpad, you double tap, right? You use two fingers to tap and click, and you select whatever option you want. Sometimes what happens is your right click doesn't, yeah, as you can see there, I did not click explicitly, but then just hovering over the option caused it to click. This is supposed to fix that pop-up behavior, but if it doesn't, you can find a fix for it online just as easily. Okay, then we have making file picker windows floating. Now, this window rule is basically just going to float and center all windows that have the title open file, open, save, save as export, so on and so forth, regardless of the class. So this basically helps with centering the file picker windows whenever you are choosing something. So let's say I open VS Codium again. Okay, this time I open the Wayland version and then I press Control O. And as you can see here, the window has the title of open file. And here there is the title of open file, which we are matching. So float center, and what do you know? If I reopen it, it's floating and it is centered. I can also change the size of the window and the window is going to remember that. Okay, that's how we can use window rules to make file picker windows floating. Great, now what is this XTG desktop portal GTK stuff? So basically it's a backend implementation of the XTG desktop portal specification. Now I go into this much more in depth, right? On how to make Hyperland a proper desktop environment, which is one of the modules in here. Yeah, this one. It's like 1.2 gigs, so it's about two hours, this module, right, in full. Basically here in the sixth section, which is my maps list, I cover how to actually set up XTG desktop portal and all of that stuff. But basically all you need to know is that XTG desktop portal is a way for you to access certain functions, right? Certain functions like, for example, picking files from your file system or screen sharing or taking screenshots. That's where you would use XTG desktop portal. Now, if I just show you the class of that window again, of that file picker window, you will find that it is the class of XTG desktop portal GTK. So I just open this window, right? I'll keep this over here. 
I'll open a terminal and I will show you hyperctl clients. Okay, grep xtg. Right, so grep is basically just used to filter whatever output that you get. Okay, now it's not going to give us the full picture, so let me just show you hyperctl clients. Right, scroll up and as you can see here, open file. Open file. This title over here. The class is xtg desktop portal gtk. So basically it's used for picking files. Then we can disable borders for SwayNC. So SwayNC is the notification manager that I'm using over here, right? We can disable borders for this. I choose to disable borders because the ones that you use through GTK, configure borders through GTK is not exactly the best looking. So I just prefer to use Hyperland window borders. Okay, then we are fixing some dragging issues with XWayland using this window rule. So basically no focus, any class, title, any title, and you're checking whether these flags, XYL and floating, full screen and pinned are whatever they are. So if I run hyperctl clients again, you'll see that these are actually details that we can find out. So XYL and is zero because this is kitty running in Wayland. Pinned is also zero. Along with whatever other data or values that we have over here. Full screen zero, pin zero. Okay, now this make browsers opaque. Now, how does this work? What does this actually do? If I open config hyper modules, okay, and let's see here, decoration.conf. I scroll down over here and you see this section, this little setting called active opacity. Let's say I uncomment this. And then what happens? The active opacity of each window decreases. And with that, what happens is we get blurring for every single window. Right, as you can see here, there is a slight bit of the wallpaper that you can see through this browser window. And it works for any window, it doesn't matter what I pick. Here, as you can see, Thunar is also blurred. If I pick Nautilus, which is another file manager, this one is also blurred. Right, pretty much any window is going to be blurred, regardless. Now, let's say that I only wanted to blur every single window that is not my browser. So I wanted to have an opaque browser. Basically, for that, I will create a window rule where I'm overriding the opacity and setting it to one for any matching class over here. So Zen browser, LibreWolf, Firefox, and Brave. Okay, so this browser is LibreWolf, the class matches, and what do you know? The browser is now made opaque. That is also an example of how you can use window rules. Okay, I'll just comment this out and I'll restore this to original. Now, as you can see here, I've already mentioned control just how much you want the blurring effect on Windows. You trade off text opacity for blur, so you'd be better off choosing wisely. Okay, let's close that. Now for the layer rules. Now, what actually is a layer? Okay, let's go over here and I'll show you. Some things in Wayland are not windows, but layers. That includes, for example, app launchers, status bars, or wallpapers. Makes sense. Obviously, an app launcher is not going to be a window, or a status bar is not going to be a window right, usually. And so they are called layers in Hyperline and Wayland. Here, Rafi is a layer. I'll step through these one by one and eventually we'll get to Rafi over here. So first we are blurring Waybar, right? Ignore zero and ignore alpha. These two are other settings. Now, what do these actually mean? If we look here, ignore zero basically makes blur ignore fully transparent pixels. So what happens is some pixels over here, let's say your bar is fully transparent, but then you don't want that fully transparent section to be blurred. In that case, you would use ignore zero, and then you would add in the namespace over here. They mentioned something related to namespace, right? Namespace, and you can find out the namespace by running hyperctl layers, right? So namespace, as you can see here, we find that to be way bar. So we put in the namespace over there and everything works. Great, then we have ignore alpha 0.5. Now what is ignore alpha? Ignore alpha makes blur ignore pixels with opacity of A or lower. So A is a float value from zero to one, A is zero if unspecified. So when blurring, it basically ignores pixels with opacity of 0.5. So if any pixel on this bar, on my bar over here, has an opacity that is less than 0.5, it's not going to blur it. Hyperland will not bother blurring those pixels. That's it for ignore alpha. Now for sway and see. Right now, sway and see is opaque and you can't see much of the background behind it. 
But if I just change the opacity, so if I go to config, sway and see, whatever config that it's stored in, and I basically change the background to be transparent, what happens is it's going to be blurred. So here, this is basically all that it's doing. So it's just setting the blur setting for sway and see control center notification window. And that's it. It's just repeating the settings for ignore zero and ignore alpha. Now, as you can see here, W logout is also a layer. This is W logout, by the way, right? This is also a layer. And here with this layer rule, I am blurring it. I am blurring logout dialog, which in my case is W logout, right? Oh, and by the way, I show you how to configure W logout in this way, like completely from scratch, like fully in detail in, I think it was W logout or some section over here. Oh yeah, it's, it was in this one making hyperlander desktop environment. I show you how to configure it like from scratch, two hours long, right? right? It's the third thing here, logout menu. So I show you how to do that from scratch. Okay, then in Rafi, what are we doing? We are dimming around Rafi. So as you can see, the background becomes dim and there is a blur effect that is added over here. You don't see the blur on the background, but the actual Rafi window is blurred. It's a bit slight, but again, the blurring is definitely there. Then we have the animation pop in 85% Rafi. Now, as you can see here, the rest of my anim, or rather my Wayland compositor, Hyperlan, is using slide animations. As you can see here, there are slide animations. But Rafi alone is using pop in as an animation. Now, if I wanted to change that, if I wanted to disable the dim around, this is what that would look like. If I wanted to change the animation, I could change it to something like slide. Okay, slide and it would slide in. I can also change the direction of the slide from bottom to top. Okay, I can make it left and I can also make it right. Right that and it can also slide from right. Now where you would actually use anything else apart from top is basically, let's say I have animation slide left over here and then I take this window and I move it right over here and I move it right over here. So it actually kind of makes sense for the slide animation to be left because you have a window that's going to be sliding in from the left and just hovering around here waiting for you to type whatever you need to. That's where you would use the slide left option. But I personally like the pop in, pop in 85% or even 90%, right? So that it looks extremely minimal and clean. So I prefer to have that. And the dim around thing, you can keep it if you want to. So I'll just leave it as it was. Yeah, so basically those are all the window rules and layer rules that I use. Now, here's how you can write your own window rules. So if we look at the syntax over here, right, you can set window rules to achieve different window behaviors be based on their properties, which is what we have done. Basically, we look at each of the properties, title, class, whatever, and we set certain rules for those windows. Okay. Now the syntax goes like this, right? Window rule, we have a rule and then we have parameters. So you don't have to overcomplicate this and just read any of this, right? Don't confuse yourself. Just look at this, it's pretty simple. So supported fields for parameters are like so, right? So basically they are telling all the ways that you can match windows. So you have certain binary values like X, Y, land, floating, full screen, pinned, focus, right? And all of these variables that you can use Let's say, for example, that you wanted to have alacrity windows be floating. Okay, you wanted the size of the alacrity windows to be a certain number of pixels and you wanted it to appear at the center of the screen. I will show you how to configure a rule like that in just a second. Right, so let's scroll down over here. And this is just a note about the kind of regex that Hyperland is using. It's using Google's RE2. Nothing much that you have to worry about, right? Okay, now for the rules, we can float, tile, full screen, maximize, and do a lot of stuff with windows, right? The ones that we'd be using the most, probably like the top five ones would be float, right? Float, full screen, maximize, move size and center. That's probably five. Yeah. And then we have other ones too. Okay, now these are the more fun ones, the dynamic rules. We have animation. We can change the animation for a certain window, as you saw earlier. For this particular layer, we changed the animation. So we can do that for entire windows as well. 
then border color, idle inhibit, opacity, tag, max size, and min size. You can also set the maximum size of a window in pixels, I'm guessing. Yes, it is pixels. So X and Y are two integers. And these are more decoration settings that we can configure. These are dynamic rules. So border size, pretty simple. All of these are pretty much self-explanatory, right? So let's say that you wanted to get, let's see what window we have over here. Clocks or Brave Browser. Let's say that you wanted to increase the border size of Brave Browser to something like two or three. You could do that. You could match it using the class or the title and you could do that. The rounding, you can also change the rounding for a certain window. Rounding power allows input and basically these ones are pretty self-explanatory like no anim, no blur, no animations, no blur, no border, no dim, no focus and so on and so forth. No shadow too. Okay and that's that. We have group window rule options as well but these ones you're not going to be using as much. These ones are a bit more advanced and I might make a video on them in the future but for now pretty much the only ones that we'd be using right now would be the window rules and the layer rules not the group ones. The tags too maybe I'll make a video on that in the future but this is all we need. So let me show you that alacrity rule I was talking about. So let's create a new rule over here, window rule equals, let's say I wanted to float, right? I wanted to float. And yeah, the class, alacrity, and that's it. And center it too, but we'll apply that separately. So we'll do this and then let's run alacrity. Okay. Let's reduce the size and try it again. Okay, well, sometimes what happens is things might not work. So let's just directly copy this one and then paste it here. So we'll paste that in. So change the class to alacrity, title to alacrity as well. Right, so we basically just had to change the class to alacrity with a capital A because that's the class name for alacrity, right? So we've set the float setting to class alacrity, right? And we've done the same thing for size. And now if I launch alacrity, as you can see, we have the window that is centered. Size is 60% on the X axis and 55% on the Y axis. And it is floating. Launch multiple windows, all that works. And yes. And if you want the complete guide to Rise Hyperland without wasting any of your time, just click the top link in the description to check out Hyper Accelerator. I show you pretty much everything there is to know about customizing. As you can see over here, it's 8.5 hours long and I have a couple of bonus modules too, like applying mental models to rising, like so. And there are additional bonuses as well. The collection of wallpapers, waybot themes, a Gravebox Vibe KDE theme and this checklist. And that is pretty much it.